Hello. Well, on January the 7th, 2018, I went to the town of St. Bees in Cumbria. I met up with a friend there and we spent the day uh, filming and photographing various things that we could see from the coastline at St. Bees. And St. Bees is quite useful from this point of view because it gives you, within a, a few hundred yards, uh, many different elevations uh, that you can make observations from. So when the tide's out, there's a, a flat, sandy um, beach here, um, relatively flat, uh, sandy beach. And then you have various uh, flat uh, concrete areas, uh, a little bit higher elevation, uh, paths and walkways at higher elevation still. You can put things onto the grass bank here, um, go up to this uh, grassy, uh, top of this grassy bank. And there's a convenient sort of concrete uh, base just, just there, which we actually used. Uh, you can climb up the cliffs. Uh, there's relatively low sandy cliffs. Uh, this is 33 meters above um, uh, uh, an average sea level datum. Um, I would get to 33 meters uh, nearer to 25 meters or so in this roughly this area and uh, and down um, you know all the way to sea level. And even the observation point where this picture is taken from uh, allows you to go higher still, although it's a bit of a of a trek to clamber up that high. So on the day in question, we in the afternoon, late afternoon, just before the sun was setting and after, just after high tide, we managed to video some wind turbines that were visible um, protruding above the horizon that were um, sort of in, in silhouette effectively against the, uh, the setting um, background sky. And this video, I in this video um, footage or using this video footage, I was able to uh, to make a video which uh, took uh, evidence like this and matched it up exactly to a particular wind farm just off the coast, uh, 30 or so miles south of um, so about 40, 50 kilometers, 48, 50 kilometers south of St. Bees. And Doing this, I was able to uh, allocate uh, each individual turbine in the in the video to a turbine and a location uh, marked here on Google Earth, and to measure the distance from the camera. And I was able to show that the uh, all in all cases the height of the turbine visible in the video matched its distance from the camera. So the closer to the camera, the higher the turbine appeared. And this conveniently, the the one the closest to the camera and the one furthest away from the camera are side by side in our field of view. So this is why is the turbine that is closest to the camera and this is the turbine that is furthest away from the camera. And you can see this um, in the Google Earth image two of them are highlighted and you see as we would look at, at this from left to right these two would appear side by side in the image. Um, so doing this uh, I was able to show that the uh, the turbines uh, height above the horizon uh, matches perfectly with its distance from the horizon but it, sorry its distance from the camera Better still, uh, I was able to show that the expected elevation here was in, uh, you know, oh, the height here above the horizon was in good agreement with what uh, Earth curvature calculators actually predict. The, the true horizon here is somewhat above the, the dark water line. You can see evidence of mirroring going on at the horizon. The two turbines that are here that are very close to the horizon, because they are furthest away from the camera, are showing clear evidence of that the turbine itself has been mirrored and, and effectively is doubled in thickness, or also very slightly distorted in, in shape, stretched a little bit. Um, this turbine here, you can see that it is being mirrored uh, it just above the waterline here. This is a well-known optical effect that occurs particularly 
uh, when um, viewing over water. And uh, it's not too surprising. But the true, um, true horizon is about here. So the true horizon is just below where the, um, or just at the bottom of the turbine hub. Now, what do we know about the height of these turbines? Well, uh, conveniently, there are websites that will tell us. And this website for the Ormond uh, Wind Farm tells us that the hub height is 90 meters above the water. So we know that just less than 90 meters of this hub, uh, of this turbine is being obscured behind the horizon. And we want to know the um, whether this uh, cor correlates with earth curvature calculators and the, and the curved earth model. If we go to a curvature calculator, the distance in kilometers to that turbine is 48 kilometers, uh, which in miles translates to uh, 29.8 miles. Um, we can confirm this by looking at the line drawn on Google Earth properties, 48 kilometers. So we know this is the, the distance from the camera and our viewer height, if we put in 40 feet, we get uh, a refracted hidden of 80, uh, nearly 80.1 meters. And we know that the turbine height is, is 90 meters so this is suggesting that we should see 10 meters of the um, from of the, of the turbine from the hub downwards. Now, actually, that doesn't uh, match entirely what we see in uh, in reality. Um, although there's this mirroring effect here, it looks it does appear that the turbine is almost exactly at the horizon. But of course, we don't know what refraction conditions actually were on the day. And so uh, because at zero refraction, we would expect the whole of the hub of the turbine to be below the height of the, the, the horizon. And with standard refraction, 10 meters of the turbine visible, uh, we, can, we can say that anything that occurs in between uh, these um, values um, and even slightly more than this uh, refractive value, anything that occurs there would be uh, reasonable to expect. Now, if we put in a 10, uh, uh, sorry, a 30 foot um, elevation, which I think is 9.17 meters, let's just check that. Yeah, that gives us just fra very fractionally over 30 feet. If we put in a 30 foot elevation, then the refracted hidden height comes to 88.76 meters. And our turbine height, if you remember, is 90 meters. Now we're not taking into account tide heights here um, and, and other, um, other factors. So uh, it's, it's uh, you know, it, it, what we can say is that it, we're in the right ballpark, whether we have a, a, a 30 foot uh, elevation or a 40 foot elevation for the camera, um, the, what we actually observe uh, in reality here is uh, in pretty good agreement with the curvature calculators. But we can do better than just that. My, my friend Walter Bislin has um, taken the information about the Ormond Wind Farm and has put it into his curvature app. And this is the what the uh, globe uh, um, model uh, in his app actually predicts for an observer height of 9.17 meters. And that's 30 feet. Uh, and if we zoom in, you can see um, that the the turbines uh, that he's used, the model turbines, we match very closely what we would expect uh, to see or what we actually see in, in, the, uh, in the real images. The furthest away turbine uh, being this one, uh, very, very close 
to the horizon. And with the refraction and the mirroring effects that we get, um, this, is, this is very similar to what we actually see. Um, if, we, if we change this to be about 40 feet, it makes a small difference, uh, but not a great deal. Uh, the furthest away turbine is, uh, we see a little bit more of the uh, height of the, um, of the vertical support, but uh, because we had uh, this uh, mirroring, uh, reflecting um, effect at the horizon, it's uh, quite difficult to say. Uh, and we, we also haven't taken into account tide height here. The tide height is higher uh, in our real observation. Um, the observation we have is very, very similar. Now, the beautiful thing about uh, about Walter's uh, curvature app is that um, he also has a flat model. And the flat model based on the turbines predicts that we should see this. So with the horizon here at eye level, uh, as it would be on a flat map, um, or a flat earth, um, what we should be able to see is right down to the base of the turbines uh, and them appearing just in front of the horizon. Um, the turbines are not perfectly uh, the same uh, height. They vary very slightly in height on the basis of uh, perspective. So the ones that are further away will appear as a very slightly smaller than the ones that are closer to them. And this is, uh, this is what the curved uh, map actually, or curved model, sorry, of the Ormond Wind Farm actually looks like. And the globe model of the um, wind farm actually looks like this. And if you place uh, these two uh, together, which you can do um, on the app, but if you place the two of them together, along with a composite picture taken from the video, you see that what we have in reality is very closely matched by what Walter gives for the um, globe model. This is actually the 40 foot elevation that's shown here, but uh, it would be very, very similar if it was the uh, a 30 foot elevation for the camera used. And this is what the flat model predicts, which is obviously completely wrong by comparison with reality. So any argument about whether the observer height was 30 feet or 40 feet is completely irrelevant in terms of dealing with what the observation actually showed. The observation actually showed something which is totally unexpected on a flat earth and I would contend is impossible on a flat earth. The flat earth uh, version, flat earth model, simply does not reflect at all what we see in reality. Uh, and yet the globe earth model is an almost perfect match. So let's, uh, let's stop bickering about uh, whether this is 30 feet or 40 feet. And let's actually address the elephant in the room, which is the observation made matches a globe earth, does not match a flat earth, and cannot match any flat earth model. Unless, of course, you can produce a model that shows it does match. Good luck with that.